The Battle of Mykel was fought in August 479 BC and was the final decisive battle of the Greco-Persian Wars. A year earlier, in 480 BC, the Persian Empire of Xerxes launched its second invasion of Greece with a combined force on land and sea determined to conquer Greece. While most of the Greek city-states stayed neutral, or joined with the Persians. A handful of Greeks, including the Spartans and Athenians, were determined to maintain their independence. Despite the Persians winning an initial victory at Thermopylae, the Persian fleet was then decisively defeated by the Greeks at the naval battle of Salamis, marking a turning point in the war. Following the defeat of his navy at Salamis, Xerxes, Fearing that his land army could become trapped in Europe, retreated back to Asia. The survivors and what remained of the Persian fleet sailed across the Aegean to the island of Samos, while the Greek fleet partially dispersed, with the Athenians splitting off from the main force. The rest of the Greek fleet, under the command of the Spartan king, Leotychides, sailed to Delos. The Persian king Xerxes also left a contingent on land under the command of Mardonius, tasked with completing the conquest of Greece. After sacking Athens, Mardonius departed with his Persian army from Attica and headed north to spend the winter in Thessaly. The Athenians then reoccupied the destroyed city while both sides hunkered down for the winter. In the spring, when Mardonius led the Persian army south again, the Spartans responded by sending an army north to meet them, and a combined Greek army, including Spartans, Athenians, and various other Greek city-states, moved to engage the Persian land army at the Battle of Plataea. Meanwhile, the Athenian navy, under the command of Xanthippus, father of Pericles and veteran of the Battle of Marathon, joined with the allied fleet off Delos. The Greek fleet was then approached by delegates from Samos, who informed the Greeks that if the Greek fleet successfully attacked the Persians at Samos, the Ionian cities would likely support by rising in revolt. They also pointed out the poor morale of the Persian sailors and the bad condition of their ships, since they were still recovering from Salamis. The Spartan king, Leotychides, Hearing this, decided it was time to strike, and so the Greek fleet sailed for Samos. According to Herodotus, when the Persians became aware that the Greek fleet was approaching, they held a council and realized they could not beat the Greeks in a naval battle. So they left Samos and headed towards the mainland of Asia Minor. They sent away the Phoenician ships and sailed to Mount Mycal, where Xerxes had left an army, under the command of Tigranes, to guard Ionia. The Persians beached their ships and retreated inland, where they began building a defensive fort. When the Greeks arrived at Samos, they saw that the Persians were not there. So they sailed to the mainland in pursuit and made preparations for a naval battle. But to their surprise, when the Greek fleet approached the beaches of Mykel, the Persians did not attempt to attack them and remained on land, guarding their camp. Leotychides, therefore, sailed closer to the camp and sent a herald to give a message to the local Ionians, appealing for them to take up arms against the Persians. After this was done, the Greeks also beached their ships and began to disembark on the shore. They lined up for battle and prepared to assault the Persian camp. Fearing a revolt from their Greek and Ionian allies, the Persians disarmed the Samians 
and sent them legions to guard the mountain passes over my cow. When the Persians saw the Greek force ranged on the beach, they saw that the Greek force was smaller in number. So the Persians confidently left the safety of their fort and lined up opposite to the Greeks, ready to meet them in battle in the open field. The Greeks formed themselves into two wings. On the right were the Athenians, Corinthians, Sicyonians, and Trozenians, led by Xanthippus and Perilaus. On the left were the Spartans and other various Greek contingents, led by the Spartan king, Leotychides. Overall, the Greek force probably numbered around 40,000. Herodotus claims Leotychides had 110 ships, while Diodorus claims the Greeks had 250. The Persians had a slight advantage in numbers, most likely numbering around 60,000 men and 300 ships. The Persian army was commanded by several Persian nobles, including Asistes, the brother of Xerxes, Artaentes, son of Artiche, Mardantes, Ithiamiger, and Tigranes, who Herodotus described as the noblest and tallest man in Persia. Herodotus and Diodorus both claim that just before the battle, a rumor started to spread amongst the Greek army of a Greek victory over the Persian land army at Plataea. When Leotychides revealed this news to his men, their morale was greatly boosted by this omen. And so they set off, marching towards the Persian camp, emboldened and eager to win their own victory. As the Greek hoplites advanced towards the Persian lines, the Persian archers opened up, showering the Greeks with arrows and other missiles. The Greeks on the right flank, the Athenians, Corinthians, Sicyonians, and Trozenians, made contact with the Persian lions first, charging them head on. Meanwhile, the Spartans and other Greeks on the left took a wider path, intending to hit the Persians on their left flank. The Athenians and Corinthians, hungry for glory, were eager to defeat the Persians before the Spartans arrived. And as the Spartans came closer, they fought with even more intensity. According to Herodotus, quote, as long as the Persians' shields stood upright, they defended themselves and held their own in battle. But when the Athenians and their neighbors in line passed the word and went more zealously to work, that they and not the Lacedaemons might win the victory, immediately the face of the fight changed. Breaking down the shields, they charged all together into the midst of the Persians. Although the Persians fought tenaciously, they were routed, and eventually broke and fled inside the walls of their fortified camp. The Greeks on the right flank followed them into the camp, at which point more Persians began to flee, save for the ethnic Persian troops, who banded together for a final last stand. Finally, 
The Spartans and the rest of the left wing arrived, completing the encirclement of the camp, cutting off the retreat of the remaining Persian forces. When the outcome of the battle became clear, the Samians took up their weapons and joined in on the slaughter, while the Milesians, guarding the mountain passes, also began killing the fleeing Persians. After the battle was won, the Greeks looted the Persian camp and the Persian ships were burned. The Battle of Mykal was a resounding victory for the Greeks, although both sides took heavy casualties. Diodorus claims that out of the original 60,000 in the Persian army, 40,000 were lost, and the survivors fled to Sardis. Of the Persian generals, Mesistes, Artaintes, and Ithiamiter escaped, while Mardantes and Tigranes were both killed in action. Greek losses were also considerable, especially for the Sicyonians whose general Perilaus was killed during the fighting. But according to Herodotus, quote, in that battle those of the Greeks who fought the best were the Athenians, close quote. With the double victories at Plataea and Mycale, the second Persian invasion of Greece was over. The Persian land army was decisively beaten at Plataea, while the Battle of Mycale finished the annihilation of the Persian navy. Greece had once again triumphed, and the Achaemenids would never again attempt an invasion of Greece. The Athenians went on the offensive and laid siege to the Persians at Sestos. After a protracted siege, Sestos fell to the Athenians, marking the beginning of a new era in the Greco-Persian Wars of Greek expansion, in which Greece would go on the offensive. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. See you next time.